Topology can be overwhelming for beginners, and in this video, we're going to work on making it easy for anybody to understand. We're going to go through the terms, the do's and don'ts, and some tips on how to fix bad topology. Let's get started. Now, topology is very intimidating for beginners, I've noticed, but really to make it as simple as possible, it's how your vertex points, edges, and faces come together to shape your 3D object. And there are good ways and bad ways to do that. And the reason it matters is because in certain scenarios, for example, animation, Characters need extra edge loops around joints like elbows or mouths so that when the character bends, there's actually geometry there to shift around and create a natural bend. Or, for example, it's very common to work on lower geometry and then to add a subdivision modifier at the end. And if your geometry doesn't have good form, it can lead to some pretty weird results when it tries to smooth out that object. Lastly, it really matters for performance. Having clean geometry means fewer polygons and fewer faces, meaning that overall you will render faster and have a faster viewport performance. Let's talk about some basic topology terms. First up, I wanna talk about triangles or tries. This is just faces with three sides. They're stable and usually flat, but they don't subdivide smoothly. A few in your object are okay, but too many can cause some shading problems or messy deformation with animating. Now I see a lot of people get confused with this because they'll hear that game engines use tries. And that's okay, but the engines usually automatically convert your quad topology, so there's really no reason for you to model with these in mind. Another type of face we have is called quads, faces with four sides. These are the gold standard for modeling because they subdivide cleanly and allow edge loops to flow nicely around your model. Most good topology is made up of quads. Engons are faces with five or more sides. These can look fine in still renders, but they can break easily when subdivided or animated. It's best to avoid these except on flat surfaces when they won't deform. I actually have one of these on the robot with its ears. You can see here we have an engon at the end, but since it won't bend, it works. Edge flow is how the edges of your topology follow the natural shape of your model. For example, if we look at the mouth on a character here, we can see that the shape of the mouth slowly moves out in these loops around the mouth until it naturally dissipates into the shape of the rest of the face. By the way, if you're enjoying this tutorial, it's actually part of a class I have on Skillshare on how to model in Blender, which is part of a series I'm doing where I go through all the aspects of Blender and helping beginners learn how to navigate the software. But let's get back to the tutorial. A pole is just a point on your model where an unusual number of edges meet. Normally at every vertex, you're going to have four edges meeting. However, if it's three edges, five edges or more, that would be considered a pole. Now poles aren't mistakes. Every model's going to have some but they can cause weird bends or artifacts if they're in the wrong place. For example, a safe place for poles would be on the back of the hand here. However, a bad place for a pole would be in a bending area, like an elbow, because when we go to bend or deform this mesh, it's gonna create some weird artifacts. Now that we understand the terms of topology, let's define what are some signs of good topology and bad topology. Some signs of good topology are that you have mostly quads. You have even spacing between your edge flows and polygons. Nothing's too stretched or too tiny. You have edge loops that flow with the shape of your object. Your lines of your edges should wrap naturally around features like eyes, mouths, or joints. You only have poles in safe spots. The occasional pole of three or five edges meeting should be kept in flat or non-bending areas. Your object is subdivision friendly. Adding a subdivision surface should make the model smooth without any weird glitches. And your model should be efficient. Don't have any unnecessary faces, edges, or vertex points where you don't need them. Use the minimum amount to keep the shape you want. Let's walk through some signs of bad topology. You don't want too many tries or ingons. This will lead to shading or deformation problems. You don't want stretched or warped faces. Long, skinny polygons that look uneven when smoothed can cause issues. In general, you're going to want most of your faces to be square. You want to avoid messy edge flows. You don't want a ton of edge loops around small details that wrap around the whole model. And you also don't want edge loops that move or clash over one another, even overlapping each other. You want to avoid poles and problem areas. Clusters of edges meeting at joints like elbows, knees, and mouths are going to cause some bad artifacts when you try and bend them. Also be mindful of how your shape is subdividing. If you notice that when you toss on the subdivision modifier, it's destroying the shape of your character, you probably don't have enough edge flows and you should add more to help define the shape. Be aware of hidden geometry. Sometimes things like extra faces or holes can happen in your object, and these can lead to glitches. Now here's top 10 tips from me on how I think you can fix or avoid bad topology. Use the loop cut tool to add new edge loops to break up long or stretched polygons into evenly sized quads. You can access this by hitting Control R or selecting it on the left tool panel, and once you click, it'll automatically center the edge loop, and then you can drag it up and down before confirming. Use edge slide when trying to reposition slides. 
By double tapping G when you have an edge selected, you can slide edges along the surface to balance spacing without actually changing the shape. Use the merge vertex function. If you press M with one or more vertex selected, it will weld those together. You can choose to do it at the first vertex selected, the last, or the center. By welding these together, you can remove unnecessary vertex points. A great time to do this is after you do a Boolean cut, you will oftentimes be left with a bunch of n-gons, and you can quickly combine vertex points together to create a cleaner geometry. When you have a point, face, or edge selected, you can press X to dissolve. What this will do is try and remove that edge or face without altering the rest of the geometry. This is most commonly used on edges. If you have a bunch of extra edge loops, go ahead and click that edge loop and then press X to dissolve. Now this is a simple one, but one of the easiest things you can do when cleaning up your geometry is learn how to select loops. By holding Alt click and clicking at either the top or the side of a face, you can select that face loop. Likewise, if you are in edge mode or vertex mode, you can use this to select edge loops. Use the knife tool. The knife tool is a versatile tool, but what it allows you to do is click and snap to various vertex points to cut in new edges to help redirect loops around features like eyes, mouse, or joints. This is really great if you're trying to fix or remove a pole, or if you're trying to convert a quad or a tri. Take advantage of the grid fill tool. You can access this under the menu or with Control F. If you select a border of edges, for example, with this hole in the object here, and I do a grid fill, Blender will do its best to try and automatically fill this with the most appropriate grid. It doesn't always get it perfect, but a lot of times it works really well. Use the bridge edge loop tool. If you have two objects with similar amounts of faces and they're separated, you can select the edge flow at each hole and hit Control E, select bridge, and this will connect the two open loops with clean geometry. You can add additional edge loops as here as needed as well. Another way to fix your topology is to add support loops for subdivision. So the point of subdivision is to smooth out your object without adding additional geometry. This allows us to create detailed or smooth objects without too many faces that'll slow down our scene or renders. Now one mistake I see is people adding too many support loops. This just leads to messy or uneven edge flows. So be careful of that. But one tip I'd like to say is that you can come to the subdivision modifier on your object, enable it in edit mode, and this will make it visible while working in edit mode. This allows you to see exactly how your support loops are going to affect the final subdivision. So if I want to tighten up an edge here, I would just need to make these edge loops closer together. So I could add an additional edge loop with the loop cut tool, drag this down, and tighten up that edge to maintain my form. Sometimes the best thing you can do is just delete. If you see a bad portion of your mesh and you're struggling to fix it, just go ahead and select all the surrounding faces that aren't good topology, delete them, and work your way inward from the good topology. You can do this by dissolving vertices, edges, or if you have a hole, you can grab the surrounding edges, press F, and it'll automatically put in a face. You can then go through and add faces one by one until you filled the hole and cleaned up the bad area. An add-on that makes this easier is the F2 add-on, this comes free packaged with Blender. Go to Edit, Preferences, and Enable F2. And this allows you to automatically fill in these holes a little bit easier when pressing F by just selecting one single vertex point. Now, sometimes you won't be able to avoid tries or ingons, and that's okay as long as they're not completely around your model. But what is important to know is to understand how to transition down from a quad to a try or from a quad to an ingon. Here's a very helpful guide laid out of what that edge flow should look like. And here's an example of me using the dissolve functions in the knife tool to go from a quad to a try and from a quad to an ingon. Now it's at this point that I see a lot of beginners give up. They get overwhelmed by all these rules and these technical details that it's too much and they just stop. I wanna say that I just want you to get in there and model to the best of your ability. Your first few objects are probably gonna have pretty bad topology and that's okay. I'd say my objects had bad topology for years. That's just part of the learning process. Right now, do the best you can to get from A to B, and over time, you will learn and improve your topology. 